Bible study tonight. And at this time, we're going to ask for a volunteer to lead us in a word of prayer. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we come to you tonight thanking you once again for your mighty power. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for being God all by yourself. Lord, we ask that you bless the speakers on tonight. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Appoint them, for we know that they're truly anointed. And Lord, help us to hide the words in our heart. Help us to under uh, open up our understanding for the things that we don't understand. Don't understand, bring it clearly uh, to our physicians that we might understand. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory and the honor uh, all in the matchless name of Jesus, amen. Amen, thank you so much for that prayer. At this time, uh, we're gonna ask for a volunteer for scripture. Corinthians verses 18 through 19 and then 22 to 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greek foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is power, the Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. May the Lord add a reading to the, uh, a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. At this time, we're going to ask for a song under the direction of Sister Cynthia Smith. The shadows, you wiped my tears away. Now I've felt the pain of heartbreak. Now I've seen the brighter days. Now I've paid praise to heaven from my lowest place. Now I have held the blessings God you give and take away. And no matter what, I have your grace is enough. And no matter where I am, I'm standing in your love. On the mountains, I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get that on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. The God of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys, God of the hills and the valleys, I am not alone. I watch my dreams get broken, and you I hope again. No matter what I know, I know I'm safe inside your hand. On the mountain, I will bow my life to the one who sent me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley, I know I am not alone. You're God of the hills and the valleys, hills and the valleys, God of the hills and the valleys, I am not alone. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask for testimonies. If anyone has a testimony they want to share, uh, you may do so at this time. Okay. Um, hey, hey, I actually want Halil. Uh, could you read? Uh, could you read the words of that song? Um, a, a 
uh, the, the maybe the first verse and the, and just the uh, and the chorus real quick. Halal, the song you just sang, it is such a beautiful song. Um, and and I, I was I was being captivated by the beauty of it. But I'm like, okay, I know there was some some stuff I missed like while I was popping my head. <laughs> So uh, if you don't mind just reading those words, Halil. Okay. To, to us all. And every, everybody, let, let's, let's, see, let's see if there's some wisdom in this song. I've walked among the shadows. You wiped my tears away. And I've felt the pain of heartbreak. And I've seen the brighter days. And I've prayed prayers to heaven from my lowest place. And I've held the blessings God you give and take away. No matter what I have, your grace is enough. No matter where I am, I'm standing in your love. On the mountains, I will bow my life to the one who set me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing on the mountain aft, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley in, no, I am not alone. You're God of the hills and valleys, hills and valleys. God of the hills and valleys, and I am not alone. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, uh, we still have room for a testimony if it, there be one. Yeah. Okay. All at this time. Okay. Go ahead. I heard oh, someone. Sorry. I just, I just wanted to highlight the that part that stood stood out to me was no matter where I am, I'm standing in your love. Um, and uh, just brings them on that that psalm. Y'all Bible scholars know where it is, where it says, where can I go for your presence? You know, if I go to the mountains or, you know, go down to the pits, you are there. Um, so just no matter where we are, where we feel like we are, we are always standing in the love of God as his children. And our position in him does not change despite the situations and, and circumstances that we go through. We are always standing in his love. I just mm -hmm. thank God for that song. It's deep, I'm telling you. Dan in his love. That's, I mean, you know, we, we talked uh, a few Sundays ago that we came up with a, we were talking about being in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to be in Christ Jesus? I mean, where are we standing? Where you stand at matters. Like, where, <laughs> I mean, are you standing on your own? Are you standing on your works? Are you a good enough person? Are you righteous? You know, or are you standing in his love? Are you standing in his grace? Amen. His mercy covering you. <laughs> Amen. Like Paul, I'm reading Paul. Uh, Paul said in Romans 5, 2. Um, but I guess it should be the first verse, too. It says, uh, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace. That's what we're in, we stand and rejoice and hope for the glory of God. So we're standing in His grace. Mm. That's, just, that's where I'm standing. <laughs> Amen. That's where we stand. All that's where we stand. Great. Amen. I thank God. I thank God for what He's done and what He continues to do. Thank Amen. God for the power in the name of Jesus. Yes. I thank God for allowing us to share that name. I thank him for sending his son to the cross to die. That shed blood <laughs> in the power in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you. Hallelujah. God, thank you. God takes our prayers of supplication and changes them to prayers of thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. Woo. Yes. Amen. Yes. I, need to, I just want to encourage anyone, if you have a testimony, even if you said it before, there might be somebody there that didn't hear it, and it could be the very word that they need to hear to encourage them. And, and when they're going through a trial, that, that they'll remember your testimony and the assurance that you had that God was going to deliver. And it just, it's just great. It's just wonderful. And I just want to say, always give that testimony because God is so good to us. Amen. A thousand times. I don't even know. It might have been more than a thousand times. I don't know. I'm pretty old right now. <laughs> he just keeps on delivering. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, um, 
Can I sing? Yes. Can it? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Uh, um. Okay. Um. <laughs> I was uh not gonna say anything, but well, yeah. I was just listening to like the Bible study, and then like my stomach dropped like in the like not the like oh my gosh I'm so scared or something like way it was more like the you're about to sing way and I was like but I don't I'm not even about to sing I don't even have anything to say <laughs> and then uh I was like okay uh I even lost my appetite and everything because I was eating while while listening and then um so I was just like okay uh just get on your phone or something and uh, so I so I got on my phone and I was like, I don't even have anything to do, you know, so I pressed Google and I accidentally, I almost accidentally deleted the, uh, this thing off of my Google search history and it was Champion <laughs> by Bethel Music and I was like, okay, I'm going to press this. <laughs> so it's, so yeah, that's why I'm going to be singing. All right. Amen. I've tried so hard to see it. Took me so long to believe it. Did you choose someone like me to carry your victory? Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve. It. You take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered all. Now I can finally see it. It's teaching me how to receive it. So let all the striving cease. Oh, this is my victory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> and, like, that's, yeah. I was just thinking about like while singing the song. <laughs> I was just thinking about like it's just wonderful how um God can do anything. <laughs> uh it's it, it's really awesome cuz like all of us everyone here has done something bad has has done something to make it to where if if Jesus didn't die on the cross, we would not go to heaven. Mm. And 
It's okay, babe. It's just so beautiful <laughs> that Jesus would die for us. Yeah. How could someone so perfect die for a whole bunch of people who did a whole bunch of bad things? Jesus. Um. So when you so when you think about how he says perfection can never earn it and you give what we don't deserve, he gave us eternal life and eternal love. We don't even need riches in heaven and in, in, in the world because we have riches in heaven. We aren't perfect. But since Jesus died for us and we're cleansed in his blood, we get to be perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Every time I think about how it says perfection can never earn it and you take the broken things and raise them to glory and I am who you say I am <laughs> and undefeated and every battle you've won and giants fall when you stand <laughs> how could anything come up against us <laughs> and, how, and how we lose <laughs> God wins every battle that he wants to win. <laughs> if you feel like you're failing, <laughs> you can still win because you're with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Have your way, man. So, yeah, y'all. Jesus loves y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the testimony. Thank you for the words. We appreciate all of you. We know what the word says. Suffer the little children. Forbid them not. Let them come unto us. And you know, God is good. Is there any other expression at this time? If not, I'm going to turn you over into the capable hands of our teacher, Elder Darrell Ladd. Praise hey, Lord, uh, everyone, and Papa. Praise the Lord. I'll be doing the night lesson again. Uh, we had a great Sunday school this past Sunday in uh, great June. He introduced some of his musings that he had written in Mark chapter 15. Uh, Mom, Cynthia started Sunday school off about uh, staying near the cross. She was teaching near the cross, and uh, it was just a beautiful, uh, beautiful time in the Lord. And uh, we can't talk about Calvary too much. Uh, can't talk about it enough either. So it was a beautiful time in the Lord and um, just listen to all the testimony tonight. Really enjoy Haley uh, this morning. So it's a sweet spirit talking about how great. Am I the only one that the the Pastor Darrell sounds low? Or does he, he sound does low? sound low? Yes. Some of the words that uh, Ray June had said on Sunday. Uh, from Mark 15. We want to just go through Mark 15 and just look at what the what the Bible is saying from Mark 15. So if we look at uh, the question he had was why did Jesus have to suffer? So I want to look at, at a couple of um, the words suffer uh, when we talk about it in the Greek text, uh, it means to uh, undergo some evils or to be afflicted. So we have uh, an experience that we have. And then based upon that, 
that sensible experience, that sensible experience can be something in um, physical or mental or emotional. Uh, it could be a number of things, but it's a sensible experience. So I want to just go through Mark chapter 15 and just look at what's in there that looks like um, that looks like suffering. And uh, to introduce that though, the suffering piece though, I would like to go look at a couple of passages in Hebrews, Hebrews uh, 2, and then we'll go from there. And that gives a good idea on why we're not going to understand why I could think this God required uh, suffering. But there are some things, there's some benefits from it. You know, some of the reasons it gives a peek into why Christ had to suffer. Uh, but we're not going to uncover it all uh, tonight. We're not going to un un uncover it all because he didn't tell us everything about it. Uh, it was just for us, his requirement. And why did he require it? That's another story uh, that he hadn't shared with, with me, at least. So I'll share it with you to let us know. Uh, but John, if you could put up on the screen of uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 2. Let's look at a couple of verses that we looked at last time, uh, I guess a couple of years ago, in Hebrews 2.10. We'll look first at uh, 2.10 and 11. Um, uh, for it became him, where is it? We get 2.10 and 11 up here. All right, Hebrews 2.10 and 11. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bringing many sons unto glory, that's us, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So when the Bible says, for it became him, uh, became him is the same thing. as like, oh, that becomes you. That means that's suitable. That looks good on you. It, it became him. This is just like the way God, you know, outfitted uh, Jesus Christ. He said it became him uh, because he's going through bringing all of us, all, many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So God said, I'm making him perfect and how he's going to do it. He's going to make him perfect. We've got the perfect savior uh, through suffering. He's perfect already, but to be the perfect savior, the ideal perfect savior, he had to suffer. Why? Well, because that's just God required it. He said, look, this looks best on you. It is suitable for if you want to be the savior and you are the savior and you're perfect already, but to be the perfect savior, you're going to be perfected through suffering. Verse 11 gives a little in, in, insight into it, but both he that sanctified God and they who are sanctified, us, are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to, to call them brethren. So his going through suffering in the design and will and purpose of God said, look, he's going to go through suffering so he can be that perfect savior. Now, when we uh, skip down a few verses, go down to verses 17 and 18 in the same passage. Um, again, verse 10 said, just look, it was suitable. It, it became him. Verse 17 and 18 says, wherefore in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brother. So now uh, we don't see it became uh, him to be made unto his brother. The word is behooved. And behooved in the Greek is, is, is stronger than, than became. Behooved means it's your duty. It, you owe it. It's a debt you owe. So this was a requirement by God. This is not a negotiable item here now. It behooved him. This was part of your duty as Savior. The debt you owe to be made like unto his brother, made just like you and me, made like flesh and blood, that he might be a merciful and high priest in things pertaining to God. So God, in his own infinite wisdom, said, here's the requirement for you to be a faithful and high priest. You're going to have to be made just like them, made like flesh and blood, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. So you're going to go and take on the sins of the people. You're going to have to take on flesh and blood for, in verse 13, for in that he himself had suffered being tempted, being tested. He is able to succor, help them that are tempted. So there are two things we see. One is just a requirement from God to look, you're going to take on sins of people. You have to be, it is a requirement. It behooves you to suffer, uh, to be made like men and women so you can suffer, you will suffer. And also, Another benefit of this suffering is that now that you gone through this whole testing and suffering, you could help them because there's nothing that we could say I'm suffering or going through that Christ hasn't already gone through. Now, when we talk about suffering, a lot of times we, we, we go back to Calvary um, and we try we think about nails and piercing and thorns, but it's far greater than that. It's not just the, the physical piece. And, and what we read in the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 
is a very you know, narrow snapshot at what happened at Calvary. So uh, to get a more detailed account of what happened at Calvary, the Christ, his suffering that he under under uh, went at Calvary, we have to go back to what we were talking to Sunday school about Psalms and read Psalms 22. And some of the things we see in the gospel account is recorded in Psalms 22, the, the thoughts and, and the words of Jesus Christ spoken prophetically by the, uh, the Psalmist David. But there are some things that we see that is said in Psalms 22 that doesn't show up in the gospel accounts at all. Uh, the exercise I was doing in Sunday school, I was taking the things that he said in Psalms 22 and finding uh, where they show up in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And in, in, in Psalms 22, Jesus said, they pierced my hands and pierced my feet. Well, I went to find that in the gospel. And uh, someone tell me where in the gospel does it say that Jesus had nails in his feet? Anybody? Nobody? Does anyone know? Does anyone believe it's recorded in the gospel? Yeah. It, 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 oh. it, some, somewhere we see about his hands, but not Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. As far as I can tell, <laughs> when I read the gospel accounts, say that they nailed nails in his hands and nails in his feet. It's not in there. I, I, and I was shocked because I just knew it was in there. So I like to say, like we do, like we talk about all the time, let's read everything again, you know, for the first time, like we haven't read it. Because I thought that I had this so many times that they had nails in his hands and nails in his feet. But if Christ had never said that uh, through David's prophetic writings in, in, De in, in Psalms 22, I, I wonder where, where we would have gotten it. Because Matthew doesn't record it, Mark doesn't, Luke doesn't, John doesn't, as far as I can tell. So, but, but there were nails in his hands and nails in his feet because that's what Psalms 22 says. So I wanna go through uh, and, and go through Mark 15 to read Mark's account uh, of the gospel. And the goal here is to just take another look at the cross. Let's revisit the cross again and let's revisit it as if it's the first time, like we've never read the gospel account and just look at it and see, you know, what have I been missing all this time and what can I now take with me that's going to bring me nearer, nearer to this cross. All right. So let's go to uh, Mark uh, chapter 15 and uh, we'll start in, and, and let, actually uh, the actual crucifixion part picks up in verse 16, but let's read, uh, let's read verses one through 15. If someone would just start reading, you know, three or four verses, someone else pick up right after them, read three or four verses till we get down to 15, and then we'll start in 16 when we start getting to the whole crucifixion story. And uh, Pastor John, jump in whenever you get ready, of course, and anyone else, you know, jump in, we'll get your thoughts as well, but let's go through, um, and set it up by reading uh, the first 15 verse of Mark 15. Now this is, right after, this, this is the night after his disciples all left and Jesus has been arrested and the disciples, uh, he's by himself at this point. And now, I'm sorry, go right here, 15. And straightway in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Did you want us to read yeah, the whole yeah, thing? Just, just read uh, two or three verses and then keep okay. going. And then someone has picked up three or four verses as well. Okay. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. And, and the chief oh, okay. accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witnessed against thee. But Jesus yet answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. And there was one named Barabbas, which by, excuse me, which lay bound with them that had made insurrection with him, 
who had committed murder in the insurrection. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them saying, will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barbus, Barbius unto them, unto him, unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why, what evil hath he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. And, and so, so go ahead. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall, called uh, pray to him, and they called together the whole band. All right, thank you. Okay, so everyone uh, get the picture now. So Christ has been left alone, and you see this uh, interaction between um, Pilate and, and Jesus. And when you ever hear Pilate's name, uh, what do you think about the crucifixion? If you, someone says Pontius Pilate, is that, is that the first thing you think about? It's the first thing I think about. Yeah. But it's, it, but interesting, he was saying, oh, give me some water and wash my hand. I have nothing to do with this innocent man. He tried everything in the world to divorce himself of the fact that he won't have anything to do with the crucifixion. And now, a thousand years later, anytime someone hears his name, the only thing to think about, about Pontius Pilate is that he crucified Jesus. You just can't, you can't just have this, this uh, exchange with him and think it just could be nothing. Whatever that exchange is will last forever, whether it's it's good or, or it's bad. But we get to this point uh, at 16 now, and the soldiers uh, led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. So they got the whole band together now. Now, think about suffering as we go through this, uh, but think about it, uh, you know, you know, from Jesus' point of view, not, not the gospel writers, but what Jesus is actually experiencing. So uh, let's go, through, let's look at verse 16 to 20. Uh, and, they, uh, and they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns. Now this is, was really interesting to me, uh, you know, it stands out. And they, they, they clothed him with purple and planted a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, hail king of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees, worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. I mean, what does that look like? Saying, hell, king of the Jews, bowing their knees like they worship him. And then at the same time, they mock him and, and took the purple off him, put his own clothes and led him out to crucify him. I mean, what does that look like? Praise the Lord, bow down to worship. And at the same time, smote him with a reed and spit on him. What would you call someone like that today? It looked like the church. You probably in most circles call them the church. <laughs> That's what it looks, yeah, yeah. It looks like and what it looks like. I mean, these people look like they were going through some hypocrites, hypocrites, hypocrites. Exactly yeah. right. That's the word I was thinking, hypocrite. I mean, because it looks just like it. It looks just like it. And the only way we know differently is because. We got the other part here, and when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him. The, the gospel writing is writing, writing about it. But if you had just seen this and saw someone say, hell, king of the Jews, you know, and bound the knees and worship him without knowing they smote him on the head and, and spitting on him, you would think they're praising the Lord. But in fact, they're everything other than that. It, and this is what Jesus is actually uh, undergoing at this point. The same people who are, you know, look like they're worshiping, the same people look like they are, you know, um, Praise to them by the same people that are spitting on him and mocking him, mocking him and hitting him at the same time. Uh, anyone have any comments on that? Just, we just want to go through this uh, this account. All right, let's look at uh, 21, 22, and 23. 
you know. And, and they compare one Simon, a Cyrenian who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him unto a place, Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And I think Pastor John, you talked a little bit about that. I think last, uh, next Sunday, about they gave him wine to drink uh, with myrrh, but he received it not. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, and you know, there, there was custom actually um, in, in Roman killings that they would they would con they would because they were so brutal, uh, they would they would actually uh, you know I guess you could call it intoxicate or uh, sedate the the person being crucified or whatnot. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, because it was painful, it was extremely painful sedation or no sedation. Mm -hmm. But, um, but Jesus refused it. I mean, and, and we even see um, in a different gospel where he, Jesus himself, cries out. He says, "I thirst." Mm -hmm. you no, know? and I mean, he didn't refuse it because he wasn't thirsty. Right, right, right. It's important, right. It's important to note that. Yeah, that's important, right? And so, but there's a reason why he he didn't take it. All right. So, I mean, but you're saying taking it itself would actually take away some of the uh, the, the pain or uh, uh, out of the suffering, taking anything like that. Jesus came to the earth with his main purpose to suffer and die. Suffer and die. I mean, I mean, I mean he had other purposes and mm -hmm. he filled all of them, right? Mm -hmm. His main purpose on earth was to suffer and die. And die. Nothing was gonna, you know, nothing was gonna stand between him suffering and dying for our mm -hmm. sins. Amen. Uh, so, you know, it's so important to know that Jesus didn't sidestep. Mm -hmm. You know, he he allowed this to be a full blunt force, you know, trauma. I mean, he did not sidestep. Yes. He didn't roll with a the punch. There was no, you know, you know, get out of pain free card. No, no, none of that. You know, I'm saying, yeah, he, yeah, he, he, he our sins on that cross. He, he did not shrink at all from it, and and that was necessary. Um, just part Pastor read in Hebrews to, for our for all of our sins to be that perfect um, priest, to be that merciful and 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 faithful high priest that we need to to sacrifice to make the sacrifice for our sins and and taking our place at Calvary wasn't um, wasn't a light thing. Um, otherwise, we would have to do it. I mean, so you have to know it couldn't have been like an easy thing. My, you know, our sins are not that light, where suffering wouldn't be have to be required. I, I mean, you think about it. I mean, let's talk about that just for a second. Our sins mm -hmm. not being that light. Mm -hmm. This is how how unlight, if you will, or heavy. Mm -hmm. you know, let's just change it because that's going to be easier. <laughs> our <laughs> yeah. sins actually are. Uh -huh. Our sin. Our sins are so heavy that Jesus. Not somebody else. Jesus prayed, Father, if it be possible, remove this cup from me. Mm -hmm. Jesus prayed that now. I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm not sure very many of Jesus' prayers went unanswered. <laughs> but Jesus prayed, Father, if it be possible. And, and, and I believe that if there was any other way, <laughs> if there was any way, for God to appease, God to, to have a, pro, you know, for there to be propitiation, for God to somehow be satisfied with uh -huh. some other path. Yeah. Then, then I believe that that prayer from Jesus would have been answered. Yeah. But the I, weight of our sins were such that only the blood of Jesus could quench it. Amen. Only Amen. the blood of Jesus was heavy Amen. enough. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus was powerful enough. Amen. Only the blood Amen. of Jesus. What was high enough, Amen, to reach the lowest parts, to touch the depths mm -hmm. of our sins and cleanse them from the core, Amen. And for God to look at it and say, "I'm satisfied with what just took place." Thank you. Exactly. Right. I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you got to think about how heavy our sins are. I mean, yeah. it's important to understand how heavy our sins are because the more we come in contact with how heavy our sins were. The more we understand on any level, which we never will fully, uh, you know, the singer says, I will never know how much it costs to mm -hmm. see my sins upon that cross. And, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and anyone who, who, who second guesses 
the weight of our sin. Just remember the prayer. And this wasn't just Jesus sitting on a donkey, you know, everyone bowing down before him. This was a Jesus who was in so much turmoil, he was sweating blood. I mean, I, I want you to really think about, you know, we think about Jesus and, and it's hard to, to separate the line from the lamb sometimes in our mind, but, mm -hmm. but I want you to think about how precious our Lord was. I mean, trembling, just hurt, like, like in, in such a deep seated anguish. I've never been in so much anguish and I, you know, I de I've dealt with anxiety in my life, but I've never dealt with so much anxiety, so much anguish mm -hmm. that I literally started sweating blood. This Jesus, in that moment, called to his father and said, Father, if it be possible, I mean, <laughs> if it be possible, remove this cup from me. <clears throat> we talk about an effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. If it be possible, remove this cup from me. Man. I want you to know that there is no exit and, and and this is why when other religions try to try to try to say you know there's another way or, or you, you know the world tries to be now how can you say you're the only way because my lord asks <laughs> that's how i can say <laughs> the only way. my lord covered that one he asked mm -hmm. he, he said father if it be possible remove this cup from me and then he went and faced the cross Amen. So I know there's no other way. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. And, and we can etch that in stone. And we can know that if there was another way, it would have been possible. That's the weight of our sins. Our sins were too heavy for anything else to carry them off, for anything else to appease God. Only the blood of Jesus. And Amen. that's and, and by the way, understanding that leads us into understanding that we are complete in him. You know, I mean, th th this understanding the way of what God had to do was so just extreme and so amazing that we can trust in being in Jesus. We we can we can stand in Jesus. And, and feel and feel secure and feel firm and feel protection and know that our God, our Redeemer lives and know that we're saved. There is no way God would have sent Jesus to the cross and then you not even saved trusting in him. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's the truth. I, I, That's I mean, truth. I can't imagine my son crying. His If his arm was hurt, he's crying. Dad, and I had a way to just heal it or, or make it better. And he was just crying, his, just his arm hurt. And Jesus was in so much anguish, sweating, blood droplets, crying mm -hmm. out to, his, to, to God, his yeah. father. This is Amen. a precious, precious moment in, in time. I mean, and this is why as we grow towards God, we grow towards Calvary. You know, Cal Calvary brings us to our knees and, and, and allows us to to fall in love with God, to recognize that God laid down everything for us. You know, that, that Jesus, he, he went the extra mile for, he, I mean, God did not have to put this, this together like this at all. Mm -mm. Amen. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, and it wasn't just the, uh, that's excellent, Pastor John, it wasn't just the, the physical pain that he's talking about here. At all. That, that's not, we don't know what was in that cup when he's staring at that cup and said, Lord, if it be possible. But we know it wasn't just, you know, nails or a crown of thorns. That's, that's, that's not it. When he, when he started off in Psalm 22, he didn't start off talking about they pierced my ears and pierced my feet. That wasn't the first thing he said. The first thing he said was, My God, my God, why is that forsaken me? And he went through his, his roarings and everything. It says a lot there that we won't ever understand. We, we, and we, and we, the gospel we, writers didn't understand. They couldn't tell. No, 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 no. They, they just no. recorded what they saw. No, but, we, but but even Pastor Darrell, with our human intellects, we can understand shame to some degree. Oh we, yeah, yeah. We can't understand the shame of the sins of the world. <laughs> I mean, imagine feeling the shame for you know. I mean, just think yeah. of a crazy sin. Yeah. Jesus yeah. dealt with the shame of that sin. I don't mm. think we get it. 
Mm -mm. Think of the craziest sin you can think of. He mm. dealt with the shame of that sin on the cross. Became it. Became it. Yes. Amen. The crazy yeah. sin. I mean, I mean, we have certain sins that we put to the side and we say, this is a crazy sin. You know, serial killing, pedophilia, uh, you know, certain, you know, I mean, we, we have these crazy. Jesus felt the full blunt force shame mm -hmm. of those sins on that cross. I mean, the shame is extreme. That's why, my God, my God, why are they forsaken me? That is, the, I mean, that that is so significant and, and and so much of a deep revelation. Once again, I mean, I mean, it, it's funny. The more we deep, the more we dig into the in Calvary's cross, the mm -hmm. more we dig in to the love of God towards us. Amen. I mean, I mean that is the result. The treasure underneath the surface of digging into Calvary's cross is the love of God is made so relevant and so obvious to us as we dig deeper. You know, be, because we really get used to as Christians just rattling off Jesus down on the cross and rose again on the third day. I, I do it myself. But I mean, Jesus didn't die on the cross and rose again for the day. He died on the cross. Amen. Amen. And, and I mean, and, and right, you know, rose again on the third day, we can rattle it off. Is it true? Yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. But he died on that cross. Like, mm -hmm. like, like sometimes I think we just need a pause right there. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's, uh, yeah. I mean, that that's, and that's why Psalms, you know, 22 is so, so, um, I guess, compelling because it, uh, it gives us a, a, a glimpse into, what Christ was experiencing on that cross. And, and you know that he's dying on that cross. And any, anytime someone's dying and they got something to say, that's an important thing what they're saying. So if you look at everything that he says uh, on that cross at Calvary. And I know we take these last seven words, we do that and it's really cute when we do those in um, from the four gospels. But he's had a lot of things. Um, that we read in, in Psalm 22, and all of those are just as important and uh, uh, more, because these are actually the, the, the mind, coming from the mind and heart of Christ while he was dying. It's not someone that's writing about it or what they see. It's, it's, it's what Jesus is thinking and feeling and saying at the time. And one of the things that he says is actually verse 24, and this, is, this, is, this was big enough to be included in when Jesus was hanging on that cross. And when you look down from the cross, he saw people, you know, fighting over his garments and, and, you know, shooting craps, throwing dice, casting lots upon his clothes to see what they could get. I mean, here he is dying for them. He's presenting them salvation. No, I want, I want your shirt. I want your pants. I want your sock. I mean, they are casting lots upon on his garments, playing, playing the game. And uh, I remember reading a book um, several years ago I think it's six, it's six hours one Friday by uh, Max Max Cato. And uh, he was just talking about how people uh, get so close to the cross. And these people right here in verse 24, so close to the cross, but at the same time, they're just playing games. He said, how, how do you get this close to the cross and think it's time to play games and, and, and get for stuff? And, and so it's convicting to a large degree because many of us could get near the cross, we get near to the cross, cross the things that we pursue for ourselves or any kind of games or casting lots, all stuff have to go away. But right there at Calvary, uh, that's what they were doing in verse 24. In Psalm 22, Jesus took note of it. It wasn't one of the things he skipped over. He, he noticed it. He said, casting lots from our garments. I, yeah. I, I, I think that's very profound, uh, mm -hmm. Pastor, people getting close to the cross, mm -hmm. but just playing games. But to me, equally as profound mm -hmm. is people who believe on the cross mm -hmm. And you know, still play games. To me, that, yeah. that, might be, that might be the other piece of that that coin. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so, you're right. That's a good people, point. People, people who pass the, you know, the the cusp of understanding, mm -hmm. and, but, but but and even reckon given the recognition that Jesus did all this for us, mm -hmm. and then you know, kind of, you know, do do their own thing, regardless. Mm -hmm. of you know, we, we, yeah. have to, we have to approach the cross with reverence. The cross should bring us to our knees. Mm -hmm. The cross exposes us. Um, it, it should bring us to our knees. It, it, should, it, should, 
it should create a, a thanksgiving in our heart mm -hmm. that, that is just perpetual, you know? And, and I mean, it doesn't mean that, that we're perfect or we're operating perfectly, but it does mean that we have something that, that, that we're in this thing to give back to the kingdom. Amen. Like, like yeah. you didn't, I, I'm like, Paul, you know, I don't want him to, I don't want him to feel like he saved me for nothing. Like, <laughs> like, like when, when you dealt with my shame on that cross, I want to, I want to at least, you know, we need return something. on that, let you know I that it was worth it. <laughs> like, should, should we yeah. want to lay something down for the Lord? Yeah. There's should a return. Want, shouldn't yeah. it be honorable for us to lay something down? I mean, am I am I tripping here, or or if you know, I mean, it's just we should want to lay something down for for the Lord. Amen. You know, we look at God as 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 not vulnerable, mm -hmm. and because of that, sometimes I think it distances us from Him because He's not vulnerable. So we feel like, well, we have nothing to give Him. We have nothing to you know. So He's God. Mm -hmm. He's going to be God whether I'm acting right or whatever I do. Yeah. And, and I feel sometimes it numbs us to the fact that Jesus faced the cross. Like he didn't face the cross like with no pain because he was God. That's right. He dealt with the cross. Like we got to get that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I mean, shouldn't it, we it, want to do like God dealt with the cross for me? Shouldn't I want to do something, give something back? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not, and God didn't make it light. I mean, he didn't make it light because his son, his perfect son, the only begotten son, he didn't say, well, you're going to take on the sins of the whole world. The punishment is going to be light. The punishment was heavier. I mean, <laughs> if anything, I mean, because it's all of our sins. And he, and not just paying for them, he became all those sins. And so it's, 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 it's um, there, there was no easy ride out of it. There was, there's no light ride out of it. You know, there was no pass given. I think that I think it was you, uh, no, Pastor Bobby, and I think you too, Pastor John, talked about someone who, um, his child, they were gonna give a whooping to a child, and one of the children said, "Oh, I'll take, I'll take the whooping from my oh, sister." Yeah, 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 that was, that was yeah. yeah, and it's like, you know, that's that's sweet, but that whooping got to be just as intense, <laughs> where it's just, I mean, it doesn't get lighter now just because of that. This <laughs> this beautiful thing you did, but the punishment is the same, and that's when we read. When we read Psalm 22, this is my God, my God, my God forsaken me. We're talking about that in Sunday school. And we have to get to that point because it became, we, he became all of our sins. And there had to be something that happened. God had to deal with sin to sin because uh, verse 3 said, because God is holy. This is what I had to do because God is still holy. And you just took on all of our, our, our sins. So I have to deal with you like I deal with sin. And the price of sin is suffering. And death. It's not just you know quick death, it's sin, suffering, and death. So Jesus, when he became sin, then that brought in you know suffering and death. Same way they sacrificed you know, bulls and goats and lambs in the old testament. There wasn't no easy quick death for, for those uh, animals that were sacrificed. There was blood, and that was suffering. And that was death. And Christ became like John saw him said, Behold the Lamb to take away the sins of the world. Okay, that lamb, take away all our sins, they're gonna have to die a suffering death. And that's what he did, you know, at Calvary Cross. That that's that's this that's the price to take away all of our sins. And that's what he did. Um, and when we read verse 24 uh in, in in Mark here, it says, and they crucified him. That's it, and they crucified him. And verse 25 saying it was the third hour when they crucified him. There are no details on this crucifying, they just crucified him. We know he, he, he was lifted up. We know he, he was hang, hanging on, on a tree. So we know there was a cross, but he was crucified. The word crucified in the Greek means drive with a stake. So somehow or another, that means they took stakes and they drove nails through his body. We know he said in Psalm 22, the, the nail, they pierced his hands and they pierced his feet. And the only thing we see in the New Testament, when Thomas said, unless I see the nail prints in his hand and thrust my finger to the side, I won't believe. Well, that tells us that in the New Testament, we do know that he had nails in his hand. We do know he was pierced in his side because of what happened after he died. But we don't see anything about the feet there. But we do know the crucifixion involved nails to a cross. And so all the gospel writers could tell us that, hey, they crucified him. And, and what else? And, and, also, and also, Jesus did actually... Um... <laughs> He mentioned now we don't we don't see the nails getting driven in his feet, but Jesus himself mentioned uh, mentioned his feet. 
mm-hmm. you know, in, in Luke 24, he said, okay. behold Read my that. hands and my feet, okay. that, it, uh, that it is I myself. So he basically said, you know it's me because look at my hands and my feet. So we oh, kind of see um, there, um, and in the verse 40 it says, and he, uh, I, I kind of halfway read, read, read 39, by the way, yeah. and in verse 40 it <laughs> says, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. Okay, so Jesus, once again, uh, showing them what he actually talked about in Psalm 22. But when they were writing it, the story of the crucifixion, they said he crucified him. But Jesus t- tell them the details of it, the accurate experience. It. Thank you. That's good. Um, actually, and De- DeAndre found that. Um, <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. We want to talk about that on Sunday too, because I want to go back to that too. Um, and they crucified him. Uh, look at verse 25, and it was the third hour of the day. So they crucified him at 9 a.m. Um, that's what we know. Now, we're the, verse 25, and it was the third hour, nine o'clock in the morning, they crucified him, and a superscription of the accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled and said he was numbered with the transgressors. And um, verse 29, and they passed by, railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, oh, that is all happened in the morning uh, after 9 a.m. And they passed by and railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, ah, thou destroyed the temple and build in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Imagine Jesus on the cross and someone coming out there ridiculing like that. Likewise, all of so the chief priests mocking and among themselves with the scribes. He saved others himself, he cannot save. Verse 32, let, let, let Christ, the king of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and that they were, and that they were crucified with him, reviled him. I mean, so you look at look at this. So he's going through all this, um, you know, uh, verbal abuse at his lowest point, you know, at, at Calvary. And I don't know what that could feel like. I mean, I remember when I had a when I um, totaled my car when I was in high school, and uh, I was sitting there staring at my car, can't wait for somebody to come get me. And this guy rode by, you know, Saturday night late. He said, "Hey, shake him up, shake him up, shake him up," and I didn't like that. I mean, I said, I just break my car, I told out, and you sitting there, you know, talking about shake him up. You know, I was really mad. That's what you say back in the 70s. You're like, let's party, something like that. And I was like, really, really taken back. I said, can he see something bad just happened here? That hurt. But I wasn't dying, and I went on a cross, and just saying that one thing was drove by, it hurt me, you know, and I didn't even know it. But this, what Jesus went through at camera, is, you know, what I had, what we go through is nothing compared to this. So we could go through any kind of, we're going to be ridiculed and things like that. But Christ went through all this. He went through all this suffering for things, for whatever reasons. But one of the things that we know is that so he could be, you know, the perfect savior for us. So he could be that great, merciful, faithful high priest for us. So that now he could help us in anything because when we go through our, our suffering, our little suffering, he's been through that already. And so he could help us in whatever help we need. He could, he could help us in those times. So now the um, the uh, Mark said, and then when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So now, so for three hours, you see all this activity. And this is this is thing that's kind of interesting to me because I don't know what happens at this point. Uh, it's not recorded, but uh, so for the first three hours, we saw this activity, people talking, people doing things, and then at six hour, that's noon, right at high noon, it was lights out. That was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So the next three hours is dark. Darkness. Okay. No one knows what's going on. You can't tell. But all we know is that from verse 33 to 34, there was just dark. There's nothing written here. And the other accounts say the same thing. It was darkness. The end of the ninth hour, then we see. Jesus crying out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, which is which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So for three hours, something's going on. And all we know what's going on is that this perfect sacrifice is being made, you know, for me and for you. And, and don't know what it looks like, but when we read Psalm 22, we see Jesus talking about his roarings and 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 the trouble and 
and uh, and the forsakenness. We see all that in Psalm 22. So whatever that was in Psalm 22, undoubtedly took place during these, uh, during the time on the cross, during these hours of darkness where no one could tell what was happening. And he was there by himself, alone. So we talked about Psalm 22, and we see it here. There was nobody with him. And I don't know how they, I don't know how they could possibly feel, but we can't ever get to a point where we think that we're left alone or forsaken, and then go look at Calvary and say, "Oh wait, a minute. he knows exactly what I'm, I'm feeling through because he's gone through far, far greater uh, trials than this, and that's just the, the suffering way uh, of the sacrifice." Um, Verse 35, and let's look at, um, uh, let's, go, we'll, we'll, let's go 35, 36, 37. Then we'll look at a couple of things here, really, at the end. Uh, 35, 36, 37. And some of them stood by when they heard it, uh, said, Behold, he called Elias, and one ran to fill a sponge full of vinegar and put on a reed and gave him a drink, saying, Let alone, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. Uh, you know, wait a minute, go back to this thing before up there. Um, go scroll up a little bit more, John, to the top, because this sounds like the same thing they said earlier. Uh, when they said, Come down and we'll believe you. Oh, where's that? Uh, 30? Yeah. 30. 30, save thyself coming on the cross, likewise also chief he's mocking. Oh yeah, 32, let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe and they that were crucified with him reviled him. So I mean, so they, they even saying like, prove that you're God <clears throat> by coming down off the cross, prove you and then we will believe you. And so when I, when I read this, I was thinking that that's the kind of thing that happens to us when we think we have to prove something to someone to get the message across. <laughs> I mean, so we think I got to prove them I'm just like them. I got to prove them that we could I could be on their level, you know, and so they could I could get the gospel message across to them. But the problem is, in this case, if Christ had come down off the cross, now they said we believe you. Well, now he doesn't even have a message anymore. He can't say I'm here to save you. I'm I'm down across because you just came down. I mean, so now the message is gone. So when we come down to say I'm gonna be at your level with people and say now they could hear what I got to say, well, you just said well you just did the same thing I do. Uh, you, uh, your message has now been watered down. So it's something about trying to reach people the way they're telling you how to get to them. If I could, if you could prove yourself to be just like me, then I could. I'll, I'll do the same thing. So no, you can't just just go go and do that. So uh, you can't fall prey to that. Um, verse um, thirty-seven. So this is the end at the at the ninth hour when Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave the ghost. And the bill, so then we see the miracles happen after this. So we see that the three hours go about darkness. At the end of darkness, all is done. The sacrifice has been made. And then Jesus cries with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. Uh, keep reading 30, 39. Uh, then we see the other miracles. The bill of the temple was rent in twain. And then the centurion, verse 39, when the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he cried out, so cried out, he gave the ghost. He said, true, this man was the son of God. It took all of that. For him to say it. Was, it, you know. it, it it's it, it's really interesting to me uh pastor because the other people had a result that they wanted to see and, mm -hmm. and what you were saying earlier is so significant because mm -hmm. it's important that we don't try to you know appease people that don't understand our mission or our calling mm -hmm. you know right. I mean, Jesus on the cross they were saying oh prove yourself you're god you know you're the son of god by coming down from the cross to the contrary, he was proving that he was the son of God by being on the cross. So people that don't understand our mission, our calling, have all these expectations. We can't, we can't really fall into that, like, like you said. Right. You know, like even Paul, Paul was talking, he said, look, the Jews require a sign. Greeks want wisdom because he could do all those things. He could work miracles. He was an apostle. He was really smart. He could talk wisdom to people. And he said, you know, but I didn't do neither one of them. I didn't get them a sign. I didn't do any talk about wisdom. I just preached Christ crucified. That's it. And didn't give people what they want, you know. They said, "Well, we'll listen to you if you do these things." So no, but no bag of tricks. Just preach the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's all Paul did. So he didn't fall for any games, even though he could have done it. And so, um, you don't have to exercise everything in your power. To do it. And when you look at it, like they had, they had a set round of circumstances of if he does this, this, and this, he's the son of God. 
which he had been doing miracles the whole time he walked the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, they didn't believe it to that point. Right. No. So they, were. So, so, so they were probably selling wolf tickets, but the end result was, you know, the end result, sorry, that means they were probably lying and, you know, <laughs> but, but, but the end result was that uh, the, the centurion, based on him dying, believed he was the son of God. It took it, all that. Uh, you, you know, he, he didn't have to come off the cross. It did take all that, but he didn't have to come off the cross. Yeah. It, it was, in fact, him staying on the cross that mm -hmm. somehow convinced the centurion. Yeah, and it's a good thing he, the centurion was near the cross, too. You know? <laughs> True. So, get him to the cross. That's beautiful. Yeah, amen. All right. Um, let's read the rest of uh, this uh, this account, and then we want everybody to make your points or ask your questions if you have any. Um, verse uh, 40, there were also women uh, looking on far off among whom was Mary Magdalene and many other women which came up with him uh, unto Jerusalem. And now when the evening was come, because it was a preparation, that is, the day of the, before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went. Oh, this is, this is important here. Um, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the bite of Jesus. I want the bite of Jesus. Now, the problem is uh, Jesus has just been crucified. And Pilate marveled. If, if he were already, say, yeah, he's not already dead yet. They just, they just crucified him. It takes a long time for you to die who's being crucified. And, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked whether he had been any while dead. Verse 45, and when he knew it of the centurion, he gave the body uh, to Joseph. So Pilate was saying, look, he can't be dead yet because this is, you have to, to being crucified is a long suffering death. They take you off the cross and you still die. You die. And they, they took them off. But what they did, according to John's gospel, they came and broke their legs so that they could die fast, just get it over with. And according to John uh, 19, they came to Jesus and they said, oh, we can't break his bones. We don't need to because he's already dead. Now, Pilate was surprised. And because Jesus gave up the ghost, he laid his life down. They crucified him. When it came down to die, he picked a point after all that he needed to do, all the sacrifice he needed to make on that cross in the darkness, just him and God. I mean, it's just amazing how no one else could participate in what was going on because God turned out all the lights it's between him and his son. And when he made all the sacrifices, they turned the lights back on and Jesus gave up the ghost and he died. And we don't know what went on during those three hours. But we do know that he paid for all of our sins at Calvary in those three hours. And, and he laid his life down then. And so we see they didn't kill him. They went through a whole exercise they would normally do. But when it came down to dying, he laid his life down. And then we see Joseph of Arimathea uh, bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a sepulcher, which was hung out of a rock and rolled a stone into the door of the sepulcher, and Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, Joseph beheld where he was laid. They made a note of where they laid Jesus Christ. Now, that's uh, the account of Calvary. Then we could talk about um, the, uh, the the resurrection after that, and we'll talk about some of that also on uh, in, Sunday, in Sunday school, because we're still talking about Matthew. But that's uh, uh, Mark's account of this, and we do have some glimpse into the suffering of, of Christ, because we looked at everything that he's experienced here from the, the gospel writer's account, uh, com, com, contrasted with Jesus Christ's account in Psalm 22. So keep, keep reading Psalm 22 and look at what Jesus was taking note of uh, on the cross. And you can see the suffering. Again, the suffering is, uh, is, 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 a, is an experience of your senses, normally painful. And whatever sense you have, uh, those are undergoing some affliction and some pain, uh, 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 undergoing some evil. And Jesus experienced that suffering, and it was requirement because God required it. He said it, it, it became him to be made like man so he could suffer. It behooved him as your duty, your obligation, your indebtedness to suffer. And when you read, um, um, you read Leviticus, and we talk about the scapegoat, when the... Um, when the uh, high priest went in to 
to sacrifice the lamb or the goat or the goat. On the day of atonement, he'd go in and sacrifice a bull for himself, but he also took goat, he took two goats. When he sacrificed the, the goat, one goat, he, he killed for the sins of the people and that blood was taken in on the mercy. Okay, that goat suffered. He died, and then another goat. He took his same bloody hands and put that on the on the other goat, and transferred all the sins, listed all the sins of the people. And then that goat was the scapegoat that was led out into the wilderness, never to be seen again. That's what we see at Calvary. Jesus paid for all of our sins with His blood. That's the first goat. That's what God required, and then took all those sins that we see on the scapegoat and took those away, and away, way, way away into to the wilderness never be seen again. That's why when Christ died at Calvary, he says, as far as east is from the west, that's how far our transitions are from us when, when God has dealt with our sins at Calvary. So we don't see our sins ever again. They've been paid for. They've been paid for. They've been paid for at Calvary. We never have to pay for them again because we paid for once. And they paid for by our high priest when he sacrificed, made sacrifice for us. And when he sacrificed for us, he sacrificed himself. at the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He suffered and he died for us. And he suffered because God required it in order for him to be the high priest. And we benefit from his suffering because now he can relate to us. There's nothing we can experience that he doesn't know what it feels like. At no point can we, uh, like Hebrew says, we do not have our priest that cannot be touched by the feeling of our firmness, but with all points touched just like us. So same things, same feelings, same infirmities, infirmities, but without sin. That's our great high priest. He knows what we're going through. We could talk to him anytime. So he had to suffer. That was God requirement. Okay, so any questions, comments about anything else we talked about? We just went through one uh, uh, account of the gospel in Mark uh, tonight. Uh, obviously, we still covered some of Matthew's account um, uh, in Sunday school. We still got two others in you know, Luke and John, but there's some things that shows up in some of them that are not in others. But we put it all together, you have a good idea what happened to Calvary. Anybody? Any comments for anyone? Uh, I was just going to say um, Cicero, mm -hmm. um, which was a senator and a philosopher, mm -hmm. he called this um, the cruelest and most hideous punishment possible. And then I was thinking about that other thought, the two thoughts I had, one about mm -hmm. the, robber, the robbers, and basically uh, they went against the Roman rule, and of course they broke the law, mm -hmm. and then he put them two between Jesus, who was a man of peace, mm -hmm. a man that, and these other men were violent, and he was a man of peace. And I just thought about that. I see mm -hmm. it. Wow, you know, yeah. Jesus, you know, it, it is. It was, you know, when we think about it. I don't think a lot of people really thought about how gruesome that really was. Mm -hmm. Still, I know a lot of people didn't look at it, but some did. That Passion of the Christ movie came out, and when they saw that depiction acted out, a lot of people were crazy, you know, about that. Yeah, yeah, so true. And uh, of course, you know, and the thing is that whatever happened there at, at Calvary, you know, again, like, um, the lights were out. I mean, you know, God, the whole land was dark. So nobody could tell anything was going on. And uh, and whatever we could dream up from Hollywood can't actually get anywhere close to what, what happened to Jesus Christ at Calvary. Just Amen. like uh, Pastor John put something in the chat this, this week that he was marred more than any man. And I saw some, I saw something, I think it was Emmett Till, it was, it was like, you can't be more marred than that. But it was more marred than that. It just, just, uh, just amazing for us because sin, God required suffering and death for sin. That was a requirement. And there's no easy button. No, I appreciate you want to go take on sin of the whole world. We're going to make it easy. You don't have to suffer. You're going to go die for him. No, you're going to suffer for him. That's what we would have to do suffer and die. So he took our place. And I mean, and I mean we've largely discussed, uh, you know, today and even on Sunday, mm -hmm. 
just just the mainly the cross portion of mm -hmm. his sufferings. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, you know, pre cross he was suffering quite a bit. I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, we we dealt with a little bit of that today, but yeah, obviously we you, the scourgings and you know. Oh yeah, 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 yes. And, um, I mean, they, you know, he dealt with a lot, and and then we we see in the Psalms. I mean, we see other elements of his suffering: beard plucked out. Um, yeah, there's just lots. I mean, he dealt with a lot. Yeah, yeah, he can't can't it, fathom it. it. It's not. It's not I want to say that it's not. In, it's not. I, I don't believe it's fully encapsulated scripture. Oh no, no, and I, I keep feeling that because you know it. But by, by design, it, it's private, you know. It's, it's, I don't know why God turned the lights off the last three hours. I don't know. They say it was dark as over the whole land because they just said it was dark. And the gospel writer said it's dark from nine to from 12 noon to 3 p.m. It was dark. And then say when the lights came back on, Jesus cried with a loud voice. So he cried back on with a loud voice and the ghost at the same time the lights came back on. I don't know, but he did it for us. He did it for us. It's a big deal. All right, that's uh, anyone else have anything to add to to today's lesson? Any uh, thing you want to add to about the cross? I just. I'm um, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Sonia. I just wanted to make a comment, and I saw. Um, very much agree with the lesson tonight and the valuable importance of understanding everything that happened when Jesus gave up his life for us. It just isn't such a simple thing. You know, it sounds simple in, in context just to say, you know, Christ gave his life for me, you know, to died covered in sin, what was take, took on all of my sin and then died for me so that I could have an opportunity to everlasting life. And that sounds so simple, but I was studying this, oh, I guess maybe a couple of weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, just doing a lot of studying about what happened at Calvary and, and what actually took place when, when Christ died. And um, it just overwhelmed me and I just mm -hmm. found myself sitting here at the table, just bursting into tears and just mm -hmm. with so much gratitude, because if you really get into the study of it, so much happened, so much happened then, you know, we know that God's word is not going to ever return to him void. And I just believe that what he purposed, you know, at Calvary was for for us to have an opportunity to everlasting life. And I think that's so beautiful. So this lesson was so nice and thank you for teaching okay. and sharing Amen. and all the comments from all the, the pastors. Yeah, hey, uh, your comments remind me of, a, I bought this book, um, like $2 on Kindle um, this week. It's an mm -hmm. old book, but it's called The Six Miracles of Calvary, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And it is a, it's a, guy, a guy named Nicholson back, you know, I don't, probably maybe, maybe, I don't know how a long time ago, but it's a really, really nice old book. And he just talks about the, the, the miracle of, uh, on Calvary. And it's really interesting because I never really thought about it like that. We talk about, you know, the last seven words of Christ. And we talk about that. Uh, but the, the six miracles is really amazing. And one of the things you talk about, like the darkness, um, the graves being open, things like that, that are really like, like this is a big deal. Um, and so it just it's just amazing, but we, we could take a closer look at Calvary in time, and that's what uh, I think all of us should be challenged to do. There's a lot there for us. Thanks, God. Yeah. And, and once again, I, I think that I think that the real result here, I mean, you know, the elements that God has showed us, it should drive us into His arms. You know, I mean, that should be the, our response to this. I mean. If somebody if somebody did all this for you, you had a chance to you know, tell them or show them something, or just honor them in some kind of way. You do anything in your power to honor them. 
Amen. That's your response. Amen. Very good. All right. Anyone else um, comments? Anything you want to share? I thank you everyone for being here, and we'll turn it back to be Master Harper. All right. We want to say thank you for joining us in this Bible study hour. We pray that as we leave the Zoom tonight, we can contemplate thinking about what we have learned and realized the magnitude of what Christ did for us. I think that um, we all want, I don't know, make you want to tremble when you think about it. But um, we are so glad you were here to join us and we hope to see you on Sunday and invite a friend. Let's do like the children. Let's invite a friend to a uh, Bible study. I invited one. I don't know if she showed up tonight, but let's invite a friend to, to the Sunday service and to our Thursday night. At this time, I'm going to ask you to bow with me in prayer as we go and to the Lord. Father, we come before you this evening. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the teach word. We thank you for your spirit who leads in God. We thank you, Lord, for all that our ears have heard and for the things that our heart has felt, knowing the sacrifice that you made with your son and that he made for us. Father, we just thank you. We just thank you so much. We appreciate you. We ask you to bless everyone here and those that are linked to anyone here. Have mercy on those and all those that ask for prayer, Father God. We just ask you to intervene on their behalf. We thank you, Lord, for the lesson. We thank you for the, the, the ministers that brought the lesson. We thank you, Lord, for giving them wisdom and guidance and how to lead your people. We ask you to continue to bless our pastor. We can and ask you to continue to bless his first family and all of our church members, friends, and Father, just the whole land, the whole earth. It belongs to you. We just ask you to bless all. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you so much for the love you showed through the sacrifice of the cross. We just praise your name, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I dismiss. <laughs>